John here, talking about OpenSCAD variables. Uh, first things first, I guess if you run a, write a line of code, you want to see this a little bit better. You can zoom in on your lines like this by holding down the control key and moving the mouse wheel. As you can see, the font's bigger. You can also do that in this window down here, which is the console window. Uh, so you can maybe see things better as I type. So I'll zoom in a little bit better this time. Uh, so what did I do here? Line 1, I assigned 5 to a variable that I just introduced called x. I can now create a cube whose size is x rather than just putting a 5 in there. I can use that as a variable. As you can see, a 5 by 5 by 5 cube. All right, looks good. I can also assign a value that is a vector, 30 by 20 by 10, for example. Preview that, and we get a 30 by 20 by 10. Okay, not too shocking if you've ever written programs in other languages before. Uh, we can also have a string. Let's say I say hello here. OpenSCAD has a nice little command called echo, which can be useful at times. I can echo out <coughs> excuse me, the value of variable called s. And when I compile and run the program, it comes along and says, hey, somebody wanted to echo out a string whose value is hello. I can also put a comma in here, and I can put more than one variable in there. Now I have hello and the value of x. So if you want to see what variables are when your program runs, you can echo them out like this for helping out in debugging. All right. Um, that's pretty much what I ever use variables for, scalars, vectors, and strings. Now, there's another thing you need to be sensitive to, the fact that OpenSCAD is what we call a functional language. You might be more familiar with imperative languages. In an imperative language, if I was to say x equals 30 by 20 by 10, and then print it out, and then create a cube, and then say x equals, say, 10 here, and then I create uh, another cube. Maybe we'll translate to what, zeros. Oh, uh, no, I want to be zero. Maybe move it up to, say, 40 in the y axis and zero in z. And I make another cube down here with the same variable. And if you're thinking that this is now going to be 10 while the prior one, oops, up here is going to be this vector value, you will be mistaken. You'll notice that both of these cubes have the same value for x. So let's think about how and why this happened. This line 7 here said assign the value 10 to x in a... Um, in a functional language, the way variables work is a variable has a scope like it does in C in some other languages. All languages really have scoping rules. It says, when can I use the variable whose name is x? It's after you first introduce them. Okay, So the scope, we would say, of x starts on line 1, and it runs to the end of this file down here. Okay, The scope of s starts on line 2 and runs to the end of the file here. Okay. That's the scope. Now, what values are used and when? In a functional language like OpenSCAD, the last value assigned to a variable is the one and only one value that will be assigned when the program runs, and it will be assigned to the variable when the, var when the variable is first introduced. So that's why x equals 10 even though you see this up here on line 1. What this means is x is introduced on 1. I can use x from here down to the bottom of the program. And this down here says all occurrences of x, even the previous ones that might be referred, uh, uh, shall have the value of 10. That's why this works this way. This may seem a little strange, but if you use an include in here, like you include a library, then sometimes you need to be able to replace a value that's introduced within a library after the fact. That's when this comes into play. When we talk about includes, we will get more. We will review this uh, situation. In the meanwhile, you need to realize that this is how the scope and and the definition, uh, the values really work. Let's talk about an interesting side effect of this. If I said z equals 10 by 10 by 50. 
and now I say x equals z right here, now I have a bit of a problem because the scope of x starts up here on line 1, but I'm telling the compiler that when x comes into scope, I want its value to equal z, which is going to be this. But the scope of z doesn't start until line 8. Okay, so if I run this now, it will say I don't know what I don't know what z is. There's no such z, even though it's right here, and this would make sense in a in an imperative language. It does not make sense in a functional language because it can't assign the value of z to x on line one. So let's see what happens here. First of all, we have our tiny cubes, which means x is undefined. We, we prove that by echoing out the value of x here. And here's our I don't know what z is message. I'm ignoring the unknown variable, the system says. And that's coming from line 1. It would have been nice if the designers of OpenSCAD would have printed a line number on these echoes and warnings and things so you know really what caused this warning to occur. Okay, uh, But we know what it is. It's because the scope of z starts after the scope of x. Therefore, the assignment can't be made. So a clever viewer might be thinking, well, create a value for z, say here, in order to introduce the scope of z on line 1. This will work just fine now. This simply says the scope of z shall start on 1 run to the end of the file. The scope of x shall start on 2, run to the end of the file. The value of z is the last one you see assigned, which will be this on line 9. The value of x shall be z. Now everything will work fine, even though it is more illogical than ever. Uh, you can see the value of x is now 10 by 10 by 50. And the error goes away because we fixed the scope of z. If you do need to do this for some reason, I suggest you make your code somewhat self-documenting. You can actually introduce a variable and give it an undefined value up at the top of your file. If you're intentionally trying to do something like this, I suggest that you introduce your variables, you define them up here with the intent to suggest that they will be assigned a value later in your program. But this scope shall start up here. Okay, So that should be a little tip off to your, to your future users as well as your future self when you try and figure out what were you thinking when you wrote this rather interesting arrangement of code.